This is the heavy. Real name, Mikhail. Job, mow down. That's right, it's the big man, the heavy weapons guy. Though, according to this height chart, heavy is actually just 6 foot 4, or 193 centimeters, in your communist units. And I mean, that's tall. That's, that's very tall. Taller than the vast majority of human beings on planet Earth. But, I don't know, I think he makes himself sound bigger than he actually is. After all, he's only about 3 inches taller than the second tallest class, which is Sniper. But I digress. Now, I never did an official tally, but I believe with the last video it came down to either Pyro or Heavy next. So I'm gonna make the executive decision here and go with Heavy. He deserves to win that one at least once. So today, we'll be looking at the history of the Heavy Weapons Guy. And of course, we'll start off with concept art. As you probably could have guessed, Heavy has always been, you know, heavy. Basically, all of his early designs have him as a large, almost gorilla proportion dude. And he still kind of is, so I guess he hasn't really changed all that much. Except for this one right here, where he's rocking a sweet mullet. Heavy has always been portrayed as bald or balding, and often with some amount of light facial hair or stubble. And he's always seen with a bullet belt around his torso. In the original 2006 trailer, Heavy has a slightly different vest and isn't wearing gloves, which always looks super bizarre. You just need something to cover those giant hands. Heavy is voiced by Gary Schwartz, who also voices Demo Man. And Sniper, but like, th the one from Dota. And he does several other voices in that game. In terms of voice acting, Schwartz has mainly done video games, especially in recent years. But maybe most importantly, he's played three one-off characters in the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Come in. Hello, fellas! I'm Doc Floyd, the very, 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 very famous, yet very affordable family psychotherapist. Inspector Clean, to what do we owe this unexpected pleasure? Victim any old ladies lately? No. And that's why I'm in such a bad mood. Come in! Who are you and how can we help you? No, it is I who can help you! When a plant is in distress, the great Dr. Toby knows about it. Schwartz actually started his career as a mime, and now does voice acting. So that's pretty interesting. Not counting Poker Night the Inventory, I'll get to that later. The first hints of Heavy's backstory came in the 2011 Meet the Director comic. In it, we learn that Heavy's father was a counter-revolutionary. I would assume during the Russian revolutions going on in the late 1910s. Of course, this being the TF2 universe, we never really know anything for sure. Considering he wasn't killed until around 20 years after the revolution ended, I would assume this might mean that Heavy's father remained politically active. The director describes Heavy's time in the Gulag as part of his childhood, but in his flashback-type dealie in the comic A Cold Day in Hell, Heavy appears to be older. At least, not a young child. So I would assume that he was probably a teenager when this was going on. A very large one, but I think that could be reasonably assumed of the guy who ended up being called Heavy. And if we were to guess that Heavy was, let's say, I don't know, 16 in 1941, when this happened, that'd make him around 43 during the main events of the game, and between 46 and 47 during the events of Man vs. Machine. Of course, we don't know that for sure, but I think that fits pretty well. Regardless of the specifics, I think it's a pretty safe assumption to say that he's in his 40s during the time the game takes place. We began to hear a little bit more about Heavy's family in the 2011 Halloween comic, where we learn that he uses the money he makes as a mercenary to feed them. Most likely sending money back to them in Russia. And speaking of which, we learn in the Rift promo blog posts, also from 2011, that the Heavy, and by extension his family, live in the... ...mountains in eastern Siberia. It does seem somewhat odd that Heavy and his family would willingly live in the Soviet Union even after being in prison there. I wouldn't imagine that they would be very fond of the government, but Heavy does have several weapons sporting a hammer and sickle, and he does have several Soviet-themed cosmetic items. So maybe it's just kind of like a nationalistic thing in general. Or maybe the Heavy is just some kind of die-hard communist who vehemently disagreed with his father. But somehow I, I kind of doubt that. We finally get to see Heavy's family in the comic A Cold Day in Hell. He lives with his mother and three younger sisters, Yana, Zana, and Bronislava, who he is very protective of. They apparently live in such a remote location out of fear that the men who took them away will come back. But at the end of the comic, they all decide to leave anyway. So I still kind of have to question why they stayed in Russia at all. Heavy makes good money, they, they, they probably could have left. Ah, uh, whatever. And it turns out that people did come for them while Heavy was away in America, and they just killed them. So I, I guess that wasn't really a problem. Okay, so Heavy is in the game Poker Night of the Inventory, and during that he talks about his past a bit. Now, it's certainly debatable whether or not parts of this are... canon. At some points, Heavy makes a few references to things that don't really fit in the timeline of the game. 
For example, he mentions liking the first 20 minutes of Rocky IV, which didn't come out until 1985, and getting a new Huey Lewis tape for his Walkman, which wasn't invented until 1979. So, older stuff for sure, just not exactly in the game's late 60s and early 70s range. And, you know, I'm not super sure that Heavy actually goes out and plays poker with Strong Bad on weekends. Not sure that's part of the story. But it's not like he says anything that breaks character or is inherently unfitting to his personality. Heavy claims to have a PhD in Russian literature, and since the beginning of the game, it's been made very clear that Heavy isn't dumb. When he's not actively fighting, Heavy is usually portrayed as calm and quiet. Pretty consistently. So I wouldn't see it as a stretch that he might have that kind of a degree. And hey, I guess that would make him more of a real doctor than Medic is. So how about that? For the sake of the timeline later on, I will be considering certain parts of Heavy's Poker Night dialogue as true. Since Heavy is basically the only class to really have something like this, I figure we might as well take any info we can and use it. But more on that later. Despite obviously enjoying killing people, as much as if not more than the other mercenaries, it appears that Heavy's work is just that. It's just kind of a job for him. He does it in order to provide for his mother and his sisters. He seems like a you gotta do what you gotta do to survive type of guy. Of course, though, Heavy is still good friends with the medic and is apparently afraid of the pyro, at least sometimes, and he surprisingly even tolerates Scout when they go on a mission together. But, uh, you know, something tells me he might not support Sana's engagement to Soldier. And hey, you can't talk about the heavy weapons guy without talking about his heavy weapons. Of course, by default, he has Sasha, who even sleeps in a little bed next to him, and Natasha as a second gun. But the Showdown comic revealed his name for the Tommy Slob to be Svetlana, Oksana for the Brass Beast, and Sheila for the Hulong Heater. In Poker Night, he even mentions being a coin collector. He melts them down in order to make custom bolts for Sasha. And now it's time for a timeline of every major event that we know of in the Heavy's life. Sometime, almost definitely in the 1920s, a baby Mikhail is born in Russia somewhere. When in school, Heavy has to pick between learning how to box or learning to herd goats. Heavy is not good with goats. At first, he doesn't like punching the other boys, but begins to love it. In September 1941, Heavy's father is killed and the Heavy, his mother, and three sisters are sent to a northern Siberian gulag. Three months later, in December 1941, the camp is burned to the ground, all of the guards are tortured to death, and all of the prisoners escape. Including Heavy and his family, who, uh, just maybe had something to do with it. Later on, presumably after the end of World War II, Heavy enrolls in the Soviet College of Mines, Farms, and Science, and eventually earns his PhD in Russian Literature. In 1968, the Heavy, along with eight other mercenaries, are hired by Red and Blue to fight the Gravel Wars. Heavy becomes the first class to get Medic's experimental heart attachment and becomes the first class to be overcharged. The administrator hires the director to film and interview the mercenaries. Heavy won't talk about anything but his gun, and this leads to meet the Heavy. At some point, Heavy breaks into the administrator's headquarters and asks her for new guns. Pyro is also there, and I think we all know how that turned out. In 1971, Medic and Engineer discover that the mercenaries may be getting tumors as a result of teleportation. Wacky hijinks ensue, and Heavy drives the van in the beginning and then he later on holds the door open, but that, that's kind of it. Later in 1971, Redman and Blue Tark Man are killed by Grey Man, leaving Heavy and the team out of a job. Saxon Hale then rehires the mercenaries to defend Manco from Grey Man's robots. In December 1971, Heavy, Soldier, and Miss Pauling infiltrate Grey Gravel Co. and discover the new Mecha Engineer. In 1972, Grey Man takes control of Manco. The team disbands and Heavy returns to Russia. Soldier, Scout, and Pyro travel to Siberia in order to get Heavy back on the team. Heavy rescues them from a bear and is eventually convinced to rejoin his old team. Heavy and Scout go to the abandoned Australian mines at the Ayers Rock in Australia. They meet and team up with Saxon Hale. They later show up at Grey Gravel Co. to help the others take on Grey Man and the TFC team. When Medic is attacked by the TFC Heavy, the, the TF2 Heavy rescues him and basically challenges the TFC Heavy to a uh, fair fight. The TFC Heavy pulls out a gun and shoots Medic. Heavy doesn't take that very well, so they fight. The TF2 team eventually wins, the TFC team is defeated, and as always, that's it for now. Unfortunately. And that was, more or less, the complete history of the Heavy Weapons Guy in Team Fortress 2. As usual, you can leave a comment on who you want to see next. I was originally planning on doing a non-playable character after this, but uh, I know that one of the highest liked comments on the, the previous one of these suggested that I do all of the classes first. So I'll, I'll probably do it like that. So you can comment any character, but it'll mostly be down to Soldier, Pyro, Demo, Engineer, and Spy. But until then, I'll catch you on the flip side, dude meisters.